Welcome to another episode of the Video Creator Show, where we talk about how to succeed on YouTube. And uh, the best way to do that is to talk directly to people who have done it. Today, I'm speaking with Mallory. She is a host and essential part of the YouTube channel simply known as Cats.com. Cats.com has an associated website, also called Cats.com, which gives incredibly useful information for caring for your feline companions. Uh, they give product reviews, uh, just lots of good, healthy advice on the, the complicated day-to-day -day of uh, taking care of, of your furry friends. Uh, which foods are best, which cat litter is best, how often should you feed your cat, all of these things and more can be found on the channel cats.com, which currently has over 160,000 subscribers and over 19 million total channel views. And you probably know, the Video Creator Show is brought to you by VidChops.com, an editing service that helps take the burden of editing off your back. Check out VidChops.com to see how you can save yourself tons of time and energy while taking your YouTube channel to the next level. And with that, Mallory, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. Thanks for the introduction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you... Uh, I, in my research into your channel, you've been with cats.com for quite a few years now. You're a host. Um, and it sounds like, did you join it kind of after it was already created? What, what is your kind of story of how you got involved? Um, yeah, well, cats.com was formerly known as, uh, we're all about cats. So when I joined, um, that's what it was called. And that was in 2017. So it had only been around for a pretty short time. Um, period of time um, when I got on board. Um, and at that time, it was just a website. Um, so I came on as a guest writer um, and eventually uh, moved into regular freelance writing with them. Um, and uh, it, over the next several years, I started like moving into a different role with content management for the website. And uh, the site owner, Doran, came to me when he decided to start a YouTube channel. Um, so that was in the end of 2019. Our first upload was on Christmas, um, 2019, mm. uh, Christmas day. And, uh, so I started doing the videos. Um, and, uh, yeah, so at, at the time I was doing the writing, um, and he basically just asked me to do simple videos, kind of converting the reviews I'd written to a video format. Um, and it just instantly started growing, um, and, uh, just became kind of, a an entity that kind of stood on its own, um, but was also connected to the website. Um, and mm -hmm. yeah, so, so that's, that's my role. So did you think originally that you were going to end up hosting videos? Cause I, I think for a lot of people, like being on camera is somewhat of a dream, but you started as a writer and then it sort of naturally grew into that. Correct. Like, is this what yeah. you, you wanted all along or did you, was it just kind of a surprise and you were like, Oh, actually, now that I think about it, this sounds pretty cool. It's a good question. Um, well, I, I made YouTube videos before, but I was very uncomfortable with it. And I still kind of am like, it's still something that makes me kind of a little bit nervous. Um, and so it, it wasn't like my dream to go from the writing world to go to the YouTube world. But um, as it did happen, I, I do find it really fun and interesting. Um, and it's, it's such a different way to interact with people. Um, so I think... Um, yeah, I think it's a it was a transition or a, a move that made sense and was fun for me. But no, it wasn't it wasn't what I had in mind from from the start. Mm -hmm. Sure. And so how how does the YouTube channel kind of feed into the overall business model of the the website? Like, can, yeah. can you like obviously this is a a podcast about how to succeed in business on YouTube. So could you kind yeah. of describe the overall business model of the company, mm -hmm. the YouTube channel, et cetera? Yeah, well, it, it worked really naturally together. So um, the site was pretty well established and um, our top articles were um, product roundups. So like best wet cat food, best dry cat food. Um, those were all doing really well. Um, and so no one else was doing that on YouTube. Um, and the thing with cat content on YouTube is that even the people who were doing reviews, um, they weren't doing it 
there, there tends to be this kind of like hokiness, like we all love cats. So we kind of, it's not as, I guess, polished as it could be. And the focus on the products was just not as professional as I think it could have been. Mm-hmm. So um, we came into it thinking what we had done over on the site could be kind of copied um, on YouTube where we would actually purchase the products um, because it was already an established site. So that it was a huge advantage um, uh, where we, we actually had a business going where we were actually able to purchase the products and then try them out, which was something no one else was doing. Um, another advantage that we had over um, like somebody just starting out on YouTube um, without the, the background of the site was that we had already done all the keyword research and we knew um, which topics were working really well. And so we just kind of took the topics that were working well and then copied them on YouTube. Um, from there, um, I started kind of learning uh, more from the people who were watching the videos um, what they were looking for. And so there is like a little bit of a difference between the YouTube audience and the site audience. Um, but having the channel, I'm sorry, the, the website there was very helpful for informing those decisions. Um, mm. So the way that um, it works into the business model is one, um, there's obviously there's the Google ad revenue. So that's, that's coming in from YouTube. Um, and uh, so that's something that's kind of uh, separate from the channel or the website. Um, and then we also have, uh, like affiliate partners, um, that are both on the site and on the channel. So, um, for every video that we put out, um, there's also an article, um, they link to one another. And so, um, someone can either click through the link in the description to the affiliate site, or they can click to the article and learn more. Um, so Mm -hmm. those are the two main ways that it's monetized. Um, and then we took on a few sponsored deals, um, over the years. Um, but that's no longer part of the policy, like, especially on YouTube, I think it's easier to get away with it, um, on, on the website, um, where you're like doing, um, Like if you have a review and somebody's like paid to have some coverage, but on YouTube, um, it really pays to not, um, like if you're doing review content, it doesn't make any sense to have, um, a lot of like sponsored reviews or something like that. So, right. Cause you, you um, have to stay objective. And if you're getting money from certain companies, then you're going to be like, oh, this product is amazing and perfect and you should totally (laughs) buy it. And um, click our affiliate yeah. link in the description, and uh, that that's not good. That's yeah. not what you want. No, it doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. Um, so, like, we have done a couple of sp- sponsorships. Like, there's um one brand who has um like paid for like a li- a little spot where we talk about it, and it's something that I already use, and so that makes a lot more sense. But um, for a review channel, it, it, the offer will come in, but it doesn't make any sense to actually do it. Um, and that was a mistake that we've made over the years, and it's just like it's not even fun because you want to be able to give a good review and, uh, or a, mm-hmm. a good review from the audience's perspective and your own like ethical sp- perspective, um, that it's always a conflict of interest and it's just not fun. Right. And so one thing I think is really interesting about how you created this channel is you, you said there was essentially a, a space in the market where yeah. a lot of product reviews for cat, related things were kind of hokey. They were almost focused more on the vibe of owning a cat than it was on actually reviewing the product and giving accurate information. Um, Was this something that personally frustrated you? Because the the crux of this question is, you know, anybody who is looking to start a channel or is looking to kind of reinvent their current channel, uh, uh, essentially what they need to do is solve a problem and kind of look around and figure out what is not being done that I can do. So, like, how how did you know that mm. this wasn't working out? You you did say you read mm. some comments, um, uh, kind of people probably saying this isn't a great product review and you were seeing them all over the place. But, like, what was it exactly that made you realize – um, hey, there, there's a space here where I, we can really move in and make a big splash. Yeah, um, I think the way I realized was, um, like I said, I used to 
write product reviews. Um, and when I was writing, I would always like to watch videos um, reviewing the products that I was writing about. And a lot of the time it would be like someone standing in their kitchen, just kind of like talking about their opinion on like a cat food or something like cracking open the can, like, mm, this looks like real food, but it doesn't give any substance. Um, and uh-huh. um, yeah, so um, that's basically how I recognize it. For the most part, the comments, though limited because it doesn't have that big of a reach, are kind of positive. Like I think, um, I think it's kind of, I don't know if it's like unique to the pet space, but I think um, there's something very like casual and, and warm about the cat community where you can just kind of give your subjective assessments of a cat food and people feel pretty happy with that. Or at least um, like before we came in, nobody was really trying to do anything really rigorous. So I don't know. I, I don't, I, I wouldn't say that the comments were negative and, and people really do love those those reviews or that kind of content, but, um, mm-hmm. it's not, um, it's not going to grow as much. It has a niche audience, but it, it, I don't, I mean, I can't claim to be the best, but, um, I think there was a better I way. I mean, to maybe do you are. Then. Yeah. I, I, I will yeah. say, uh, so I, uh, my, my girlfriend has a cat and he is very wonderful. Um, and she was kind of looking into cat wheels and your your cat wheel yeah. review really. Okay. Um, I, I liked it a lot. Uh, and all of the food review, like it it was hard to find good information on products, mm-hmm. uh, backpacks specifically, actually, because, um, you know, she kind of wants to take them outside, but it's dangerous. Um, but it was yeah. very difficult to find a backpack that seemed like a good idea like everything seemed like um it was just hard to trust so i i think um mm-hmm. this space is really really huge um like you mm-hmm. you found something that was clearly wrong uh and you you kind of innovated there um and i i think even just talking to you before the podcast you seemed like you have, you have an analytical mind is that fair to say um well i think so i i think um yeah, I mean, I, I was kind of reflecting on this. You had a question. Well, I guess I, I'll touch on that later. But like, I think for me, the thing that I enjoy the most is like saving people from um, just bad information and um, a lack of information. And there are just so many mm-hmm. mistakes to be made when you don't aren't given um, the information you need. So it, I think that's the thing that I find the most fun is um kind of picking things apart and um yeah uh researching and, and finding things out um to, for myself and then and then sharing it to kind of hopefully clear things up for people the other thing that's really nice about the channel is that um every video is like a little forum and maybe you notice this when you watch the the wheels video yeah um that like it's the things that people say in the comments are like more valuable than the things that in the video, because you have like, you know, hundreds of people coming in and talking about their experience with the wheel. And I learned things while reading the comments. Um, and I know presumably other people are learning a lot. So I think, um, yeah, it's, it's really cool to kind of facilitate that kind of conversation um, where maybe in the past there's nobody's really, giving people the opportunity to have a more critical conversation about cat stuff. And it's just like, Oh, it's just fun stuff for my cat. And they're not really thinking about it analytically the way they would about anything else. And like, that's kind of why I'm inspired by like um, Marquez Brownlee a lot, like to do Mm -hmm. actually good cat product reviews because cats and cat people deserve to have good information and good products that, and not just be, have things kind of, I don't know. Like people, I think people take advantage or brands and companies take advantage of people's love for their, their pets. And there's like this thing, like the pet tax, um, where they'll just like charge too much for something just because you have the warm fuzzy feelings and, and you'll do anything for your cat. But in reality, it's not good for the cat or it's not good enough for the cat, nor is it good enough for you. Um, so yeah, that's, I think the thing that is the most fulfilling to me about the channel. Um, and hopefully, it has a ripple effect, like I said, through the comments and conversations mm-hmm. outside of I, I'm sure it does. And I, yeah. I think for those listening, like, as you mentioned, the pet tax, there's a, a lot of 
uh, overpriced BS involved with products around pets. Uh, are your pet camera video was really interesting where um, mm. kind of one of the, the big takeaways was like the a normal security camera is cheaper and better as a pet camera than the cameras that were marketed as pet cameras. Um, and I think there's probably a lot of industries like this where people like uh, YouTubers, individuals can kind of move in and help people wade through what is true and what is not. Because um, that was really interesting to me how mm -hmm. um, overpriced a lot of these products are. And how, uh, yeah. th like, this is, a, this is a problem I never, ever thought about. Uh, but it's out there. And it, uh, it it does seem like your your channel is really tapping into um, solving that. So, um, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I feel like this is a, a good space to be in, for sure. So, clearly, you love cats. You you're you have two, correct? Forrest and Wes? Yes. I, th those are your... <laughs> yes. Um, so, you, you love cats. Clearly, I, I'm sure you have for a long time. What, what has it been like kind of combining uh, your, we'll say, love of cats with your career? Like, has it been natural and organic? Have you felt like in some ways that mixing money and your love of cats has made it more complicated to love cats? Uh, like, what has that been like? Because I, I know for me, like, I grew a video game, an anime channel, um, mm -hmm. and it did feel like it sort of tainted my appreciation of games and anime but obviously uh these are not living breathing creatures um so i'm curious about yeah. your experience with with that yeah it's a really interesting question um well so i i've never really had um what i would consider like before this um and even this is kind of unconventional but i've never really had like a, what i would consider like a, a normal job um I, I was homeschooled. I started, like, I spent years of my childhood working with my family on our website. Um, and quickly that evolved into cat stuff. Um, my younger sister started a website about cats and she had this one page that kind of was really popular and that inspired us to kind of get into cat blogging later down the road when I was in my teens. And I also worked with her on a cat harness business that she started also in our teens. And so, like, cats and and making a living um have always been kind of intertwined for me um but it has gotten much bigger um since i got into this especially with the youtube channel um where i do sometimes have the feeling that cats become this like abstract concept for me because i'm just, like spending all of my time writing about it and thinking about it researching cats and then i'm like i actually have cats in my home it's like <laughs> real Mm -hmm. um, because it, it can just feel like I'm saying the word cat again and again, looking it up, thinking about like how their bodies work, all of these different things. And then there's a little bit of a detachment. Um, and, and there's like a divide between how I actually interact with my cats and how I talk about them kind of in an abstract way. And actually, I think that is something that's kind of lacking on the channel is that, um, I think it could stand to be a little more. Um, like authentic and representations of how I actually live with my cats. Um, hmm. Because sometimes it, it does feel a little um, clinical to me. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any uh, video ideas for like how you would go about doing that? Um, kind of. Um, I had, I, I recently did a video about my cat Forrest and how she was diagnosed with kidney disease and it did really well. Um, and I have thought about just, um, cause that's, that's an informative video. It was meant to kind of raise awareness and help people to understand how they can deal with it. It's an incredibly common issue for cats. Um, and I think there are ways that I could weave in more like personal stories and, and like videos of my cats doing things rather than just solely sticking to like the product roundups or, um, information on cats in general, just to weave in something a little more personal. Um, I also want to not just be someone just talking about my cat's experiences um, or like subjective assessments based on my cats, but I think there is a way to, to make it a little bit more real. Um, uh, obviously, if I, if I had it figured out, I'd be doing it. Um, it's still something I'm, I'm kind of 
I don't know exactly why there's kind of a block with how that would work, but I'm not quite there yet in my head. Um, Mm -hmm. Sure. And so you, you said you've never had like a normal job. I'm curious what your day to day looks like. Uh, So is this kind of your full-time job? Is it part-time and you have other jobs? Like what is a, a day in the life look like for you? Yeah. Um, yeah, this is my full-time job. Um, so I have other things that are going on besides the YouTube, um, channel. So I'm, uh, as the head of content at cast.com, I am like talking with readers, um, by email. Um, I'll also like talk with, um, internal communications on like different projects we're working on, um, with the website, like with our email list, approving the email, uh, newsletters that are going out, um, reviewing the content that's going out, scheduling it. (laughs) And um, then I'll try to dedicate um, one day a week exclusively to video um, where I'm like taking video of the products and um, preparing for things. Um, It does get kind of overwhelming um, with all the other um, hats that I wear, so to speak, um, where I, I feel like I could be more focused on video and it, they would probably come out being better. Um, but nice. yeah, so I'm, I'm dedicating a day of the week to filming and then I will dedicate another day of the week to editing. Um, so uh, at this time I'm recording and planning and, and I make my videos and I edit them. And then you might've noticed we also have um, Dr. Sarah Wooten who is a veterinarian and she'll come on and do a video about once a month. Um, and so my job is to, uh, coordinate, give her like an outline, um, approve the video. And then we have an editor, um, who will edit the video. Then I'll give approvals on that. Um, so that's able to kind of offset some of the actual video work for me. Um, oh, and also I'm going in and responding to comments. I'm responding to comments on YouTube three times a week. Um, Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so I, I do try to make a point of going through and I, I thumbs up every comment. Um, even the mean ones, uh, just to sh- show <laughs> engagement and then, um, sure. heart, I'll heart, uh, comments and then respond to any questions. Um, so, mm-hmm. and I think we have managed to have a pretty engaged, um, community or people feel like they get their questions answered. Um, Mm-hmm. I would say so. Yeah. So as the head of content, I, I think one thing that makes people nervous about running a YouTube channel is they're worried about running out of things to talk about. And I think mm-hmm. you guys are are in a good space where you have a niche, cats, and it, it seems like there's uh, plenty of topics, but it's like a reasonably narrow umbrella that you kind of operate under. Yeah. So like, how do you... How do you keep fresh with things to talk about? Because kind of week in and week out, um, you know, you've been doing this for for years. It seems like, yes. um, it, does it seem challenging to like, God, what do no. I talk about now? Like, can I really write another article about cat litter? Or like, what, what is that like? Yeah. And how do you deal with it? Yeah, there are always new ideas. We have the entire rest of the year planned out and we have more ideas um, mm. on the way. Um, I have more ideas than I have time. Um I think, like I said, um, having an existing website to pull from um, has made it a lot easier. Let me take a second to try to think about it so I can give a good answer. Um, Because I think... Sure. So... For someone else who is going into this and trying to figure out um, what to cover... I think first you need to land on something that works. Um, And we were really lucky um, in that the first video that we put up, which was best cat water fountains, um, was one, we already had proof of concept because it was working on the website. And two, it went over well. And so we knew from the first video, like roughly what people wanted to see. And and since then, those, those roundups have always done really well. Um, so I, like, I hear, um, like people will say, you know, if, if you find something that works, keep doing it. And so people will kind of do spinoffs of, um, the same topic again and again. 
and that has roughly been effective. Um, the, I think at some point, um, maybe we will run out of like these product roundups to cover and maybe people will get kind of bored of them. Um, but so far there are just so many different variants. Like you can take one video that's gone over well, like best cat food, and you can do a bunch of new videos from it. You can do an update for the next year. You can do a cheap version of it, like best budget cat food. And then you can mm. think about all the other variants on that best cat food for sensitive stomachs, best cat foods for picky cats, best cat food. Like there are so many different options. And right. so you're still working with them. Um, like that general type of video that's worked in the past. Um, and I think, yeah, I think you're right that it's just a, it is a niche that is really, it's both structured enough that you kind of know what to talk about. Um, but it's also broad enough that there are, there are just so many things that you can, um, do with that. And I think, um, in addition to just referencing the existing site. So like if I were coming into this new from the beginning, um, I think I would look at if it was something that was untapped on YouTube, we're coming from a website, then I would look and model um, like a successful website or some other place where people have been successful and try to like to bring it over to the new platform. Um, if you're building off and then you can also like you know, you can model other channels if it's something that's kind of already been done before, but add your, your own spin on it. There are always things you can reference. Um, and then the other thing I've noticed as like a wellspring of fresh ideas is just the comment section. Like people will tell you what they want. Um, and I know it's hard, like if you don't have an audience, <laughs> you aren't right. getting um, people Starting making requests zero. to you. But um, something I've done is like, I'll look up a video on something I'm going to be covering and I look in their comments and the like, there are always complainers like you didn't cover this, you didn't cover that. And so you can find like little right. gaps um, that you could do. Um, mm -hmm. So, so I, yeah, I, think I think one thing that's, that's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One thing that's interesting about your kind of place on the channel is a lot of people I talk to, they sort of, they started a channel from scratch and they're mm -hmm. kind of the host and the the leader of the, the channel or, or whatever. They're kind of like a one person team. Maybe they mm -hmm. hired some editors, um, but you work on a team. Uh, what, what has that been like kind of running a channel with a team? Obviously, you're the head of content, mm -hmm. so it sounds like you're um, at the end of the day in charge of the channel, but you mm -hmm. have other people to lean on and kind of help run the overall direction of the, the mm -hmm. business. Um, like, what do you think that is like versus how it might feel to run a channel on your, your own? I know it's kind of hard to say because... Um, you didn't. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think you did say you've made videos by yourself in the yeah. past, but so kind of what is the yeah. difference there? Um, well, I, I feel a little bit like a, like a cheater um, because it's it, there are so many advantages. Like it's been it's been really nice to have this background of the company. Um, I, I have um, like the guy who runs the website, he knows SEO. And so originally he came up with the ideas for the videos. Right. Um, and he helped with that. Um, we have a, a graphic designer who can do the thumbnails. Um, I, we're at a huge advantage. Um, and so I think there's the downside to that is like not feeling as, as fulfilled maybe like if I had done it all by myself, maybe I would have more of a personal sense of pride. Um, so that's, I guess a downside. Um, and also I don't have ownership over it myself. Um, but as a company, um, it's been, it's been really, um, positive. Um, mm -hmm. in the past, like I said, um, I had a website called Wilderness Cat and we had a YouTube channel. Um, and I would say the biggest difference is, is just the lack of support and direction and, and knowing that we had already kind of tried these things, um, over on the site. And, and also that someone else was pushing me to do these things gave me a lot more confidence um, when I was doing uh, videos for our 
our channel, um, there was always kind of a sense of like, maybe it's stupid to be making this video or like um, a lot of questioning over, over whether it was worth it to make it or how the video would go over. Um, and I think that was slowed us down a lot. Um, and just when it is just your job, you can just do so many more things. Like imagine all the things that we do for work that we wouldn't do if it was our own little endeavor. And, um, so I think right. that has made a huge difference. Um, but mm -hmm. I think the, the rewards ultimately are greater, um, for someone who, who has full ownership of the channel and, and can really, um, reap the rewards of its growth, um, rather than like be, being on a, a salary. Yeah, I think that's one interesting tidbit is running your own channel is sort of higher risk, high reward. If mm -hmm. a video doesn't perform well, then you are probably going to get paid less. Uh, whereas if you're on salary and it's a job, mm -hmm. then, you know, there's a sense mm -hmm. of you're working for somebody, which always makes it easier to be motivated. You obviously have a consistent yeah. income. Um, there, there's mm -hmm. sort of a, a trade off here that I, I do feel and I've found this myself. So when I was full time running my own channels, um, I felt like there was a lot more pressure to be creative. Um, and to yeah. come up with ideas that would do well. And that can be cool, but it can also be really nerve wracking and honestly just um, not as fun as it sounds. Um, like now, mm -hmm. now that I freelance and have clients and I'm working for other people, um, like the, the income is just more consistent and it's uh, that is more relaxing. Um mm -hmm. So I, I think there's really sort of two ways to approach this. Um, mm -hmm. you, when you work for yourself, you obviously have kind of maximum freedom, but you do have this sort of added level of pressure and self-motivation that you you need to be able to to perform. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, uh, I don't know, I, I think it can be overrated. And I, I think it's it's cool that you were able to find a way onto YouTube with a, a company. Honestly, that <laughs> kind of sounds like the dream. Um, like you, you have this team with you and you get to kind of come up with video ideas and host them. And um, like, do you think you will kind of go back to Wilderness Cat as like a side project? You seem pretty happy with cats.com. I, I don't expect you to leave or anything, but um, mm -hmm. like, do you think you would ever go back to making videos on your own on the side? Would it involve cats? Mm -hmm. Do you have bigger sort of personal creative plans? Uh, I'm, I'm curious about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what the future holds, but I do think that this experience will be something that I will take with me. Um, I think that I, do, I really, I can't imagine a better way for it to have happened. It helped me to overcome a lot of um, just a lot of hesitation and doubt about making things. Um, and I think you can take that experience in the future and um, do something like independent or, you know, air quotes. Mm -hmm. independent but um yeah um i do think in the future i would like to not necessarily wilderness cat but um you know do something else um taking the experience that i've uh had with this with me um mm -hmm. And what, how, how do you think that being on camera has affected you? So I, I found with myself that hosting videos and I did a lot of live streaming as well. Um, I, I tend to be pretty introverted, but I did find mm -hmm. that showing up in front of a camera made it easier to have normal conversations. It sort of lessened social anxiety a lot for me. Um, and I, I think that there's also a certain amount of validation, I think, that comes with, uh, like, having an audience. And, you know, it yeah. can be sort of tumultuous at times, but overall, I think there was some some validation and almost like a practice speaking that I yeah. couldn't have gotten any other way. Have you found that this did affect you kind of positively on a personal level in some way that you didn't expect? No, you, I mean, you've described it exactly. Um, I think when I was first going into this, like I said, I had done YouTube videos in the past, but um, I'd never had an audience and, and people in the comments and people talking. And it's been 
it has helped me to build confidence, um, knowing that I actually can sit there and people can actually understand the things I'm saying. And I'm not just completely incapable of, of expressing thoughts, um, in a, in a coherent way. And, um, that these things are actually helpful to people is really surprising to me. Um, cause I'm like, these videos are connecting with millions of people. Um, and it's, um, yeah, it's, it has given me a lot more, I guess, confidence knowing that that is possible. Um, um, mm -hmm. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, people are actually getting help from these videos, which is crazy. So I think that is definitely something I would uh, take away from the experience. Mm -hmm. That That's awesome. And I, I'm curious now, sort of, we, we touched on your backstory a little bit, but yeah. I, I think one thing that stops people from getting involved with YouTube or social media in general is they feel unprepared for it, like they don't have a background that suits it. Uh, you you have a background in writing, of course, but kind of what, what was your life like leading up to all of this? Maybe even before cats.com and the wilderness yeah. cat, like um, you said you were homeschooled, but for yeah. anybody who, if you were to talk to somebody who felt like, um, I don't deserve to be in front of a camera, um, like, can you, can you walk them through your background? And I'm sure they'll yeah. find, um, that they can relate to better than they, they think. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, I, I, like I said, I had, uh, I was homeschooled. Um, like I said, which was just a major part of my upbringing, knowing that I was kind of, um, not brought up in the in the paradigm that I saw everyone else in. Um, and so like, um, additionally, part of that homeschooling was very much um, making a website. Well, we had a website called Rocky Mountain Kids Corner. We started when I was 10. And so I grew up writing articles for that website with my family um, and like working on a business strategy for that site. It was kind of like a lifestyle um, site. And so I was always, um, involved in that. And then, uh, we also had a YouTube channel for that. Um, one summer I was supposed to spend the entire year, um, learning about videography because my dad thought this was like the most valuable skill that somebody could have in the, these changing times. So it was like 2008 sure. YouTube was, was new and, uh, we were, this was going to be it. And I don't think we really did as good a job of it as we could have, but, um, it was definitely something that was a, a critical part of my upbringing. Um, and uh, eventually I, like I said, I got involved in um, kind of like the marketing of this cat website. Um, I did when I was uh, 13, I made a website through this like SEO challenge. Um, and so like the goal was make a dollar by the end of the 30 days um, on your little SEO website. So that was my introduction to that. And I pretty much continued working in that same, uh, space, um, for like, it's been my whole life up until now. Um, the one, um, work experience that has, that was kind of outside of that realm that has probably kind of contributed was I worked as a tour guide at a, at a mansion, um, for one summer, mm -hmm. um, in my teens. And, um, that was also a really, interesting experience with public speaking. And something I learned with that was if you tell people like how to feel about something, like I would say, look at this, um, uh, dog's head chair. Isn't it remarkable that people would remark. And, um, so you can kind of shape the way people feel about things, um, by kind of telling them, um, which was just such an interesting learning experience to me. Um, and so, yeah, that was, that was a really impactful experience, but I was soon back to just being on the computer, doing my, my stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's been pretty much just like blogging. And then for the last, um, how, how long has it been? Um, probably like the last seven years has been cats, 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 um, and mostly cats.com. Um, so. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and I, I think it's cool how varied you are. Like, you have some videography experience, the tour guide experience, the blog, the writing. Uh, like, all of this seems like it combines naturally and really well. Um, I, I also really liked that that goal you had. I, I know you were 13 at the time, but making a dollar after a month, I feel like, is a very... Um, it's like a, a wholesome goal or something. I, I think too many people, like... They, especially when they're older, you know, let's say you're like 25 mm -hmm. and you want to get involved with this stuff. Um, I feel like their goal might be make $10,000 in three months. And that is, I don't know, you kind of end up shooting yourself in the foot. Whereas if you start small, you can kind of build from there and really good things can can happen. Um, I remember I I did like stand up comedy open mics for a year, and my goal was to just have like one show that wasn't an open mic uh, that I got invited to do, um, and that I got paid for, and either either like a free meal or a free drink, or mm -hmm. or whatever, or actual money, um, and I actually got. Uh, two. I, I got two shows where I got uh, a free dinner and a drink. And I was like, mm -hmm. there we go. And it inspired yeah. me to, you know, to do this thing for a year that was really nerve wracking yeah. and hard. Um, and, you know, I, I think if people set their goals more realistically, they can actually end up getting way more done um, instead of like I don't know, just shooting for the moon too quickly. Yeah. Um, I think the other lesson is like just scaling and that these things can grow exponentially. And like, that's been yes. uh, like the experience with this channel. Like if you have, if you, if you have good engagement, low views and somebody's commenting on it saying they love it, um, you can have like a hundred thousand, a million people feeling the same way. Um, so it's not about big results in the, in the beginning. It's about high quality results in the beginning um, that are are telling you this is something that can work. Mm -hmm. And uh, so yeah. what, what would you say are the best and worst parts of being on YouTube? I know it's kind of a loaded question, but I uh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a, a fun question to ask. The, the best and yeah. worst of being an online person. I don't know. And, I you think know, uh, for, yeah, there are probably multiple best things. Um, I think it's just, it has been really enjoyable to see um, like people in the comments, just like um, learning and sharing their experiences. And it's, it's very, it's both validating and uh, fulfilling um, to know that you're able to like get a message out um, at all. Um Mm -hmm. So that's been rewarding. I mean, and it's also rewarding to have some degree of um, creative freedom and and the ability to to do things that you find fulfilling. But then I think there's also a downside to it where your your life kind of revolves around something that feels sort of, um, like it's like a weird, it's a weird combination of like you and not you. Um, like there's a, like when something is supposed to be representing your life or talking about yourself or your cats, there's like a, a strange sense of disconnect between um, your real life and this kind of like representation of, of yourself um, that feels a right. little strange. Um And I think I it's healthy know. to I have it that way. Yeah. Like, it, it, yeah. if there's no filter yeah. between how you present yourself and yeah. who you actually are, um, that's how you lose your mind. So I, I think usually, <laughs> uh, I don't know, there's YouTubers who have had sort of dramatic, uh, we'll, we'll say downfalls, where I think yeah. they kind of ended up like using YouTube as like, they tried to it was like their audience was their friend slash therapist. And um, that's yeah. not good. Like you, there needs no, to be yeah. some level of separation. And I, I think that yeah, is, is ultimately healthy, but I do understand why that's weird, especially when people yeah. comment. Uh, sometimes I'm sure they sound like they think they know you or, yes. um, no, you know, yeah. It, yeah, it can be off. I think, <laughs> I think another thing about it that is kind of weird is <laughs> recognizing that like, it's 
it is like an interesting dynamic where you become you want to be really helpful and then you find out that people expect you to help them which is is kind of interesting like there was a time like i didn't respond to, to some comments for a little while and they're like can anybody does anybody ever get a response in here i have questions and like the sense that that like people are counting on you or, or like it is it is a company but i think they're kind of viewing it as one person um and it, yes. it i don't know it's it's interesting to see like what the expectations are because i never expect people on youtube to respond to me and help me personally but um but but there is there is a great demand for it, which is a good thing because you can you can like when people are asking, please like tell me exactly what I should feed my particular cat. That's an opportunity to to help them, and like from a business perspective, with like a very long paragraph that the describing yeah. their cat's entire upbringing in life yeah. and list of uh, yeah. medical history and uh, why why haven't you responded yet? <laughs> I yeah, took it now, three hours now, to write this comment. <laughs> Yeah, and now the podcast is out there, and they'll say, Meowlery doesn't want to answer our questions. Oh, no. 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 <sighs> it's just, uh, it's I, a, this is just part of it. There's a lot of people, and you only have so much time. You're doing yeah. your best. You do care about all the comments. It's just, yeah. um, it's, uh, it can be a lot. And I, I think that's sort of the nature of parasocial relationships like this, right, is um, there's mm -hmm. a, there's one of you and, you know, some people you work with. Um, and then there's literally tens of thousands of others. And I think, um, you know, that's just sort of the uh, part of the strangeness, I think. It's you. We, yeah. we always do our best as personalities to, um, you know, accommodate. But ultimately, if we responded and read deeply into every single comment then it just um it would be totally impractical and it's uh yeah. unfortunate i wish i was a a cyborg that could respond to everybody and um whatnot but it's just yeah whew, that'd be a lot i yeah i also hopefully i won't we won't um become a cyborg responding using AI responses <laughs> to everyone and they don't know it and that's that's all just a complete uh empty facade but um yeah um <laughs> we're getting philosophical another now. thing i love it i will i will say another thing that has been kind of a bit of a negative and that i feel like people don't talk so much about um with being a, a youtuber doing review stuff specifically is one people want to send you so much stuff um, mm -hmm. like this has been going on since, um, like when I had wilderness cat, which was a smaller channel, it just recently hit a thousand subscribers even now. Um, but it's always getting stuff coming in. And now I, well, like you can see this, I have this shelf of stuff behind me. If, if you can see the video, but, um, I, I have a whole garage full of cat stuff. Um, the amount of junk that is accumulated, or I'm sorry, not junk products that I'm not able to mm -hmm. use anymore because I'm not trying them out, but I might need them for a future video is incredible. Um, and I, I'm never sure what to do with it. And, um, like there is, uh, I remember, uh, Marquez Brownlee, uh, who I mentioned earlier, he has a video where he says, yeah, I just keep this stuff because I might need it in a future video. I'm not donating it or selling it or anything. I still have it. So it does seem that this is something other people are experiencing, but it's just this, um, this constant question in my mind of where do I put all of these products that I've tried and might need for a future video. Um, and I, I realize it's like, I'm, I'm incredibly privileged to, to be able to have all of these, these cat products and things that um, other people wish they could have. Um, but it, it is, um, it's weird. It's weird. I would never, I would never have all of these things um, if it was just me. Mm -hmm. Do you think one day you'll have like a thousand cats so that you can finally utilize all of these products at once? I'm well, I think even if I had a thousand cats, I wouldn't want to use all of these products with them. Um, hopefully I can give them to a thousand other cats at some point. Um, mm. I, I don't know. Yeah, that, that is one interesting thing. Like, um, we had a P.O. box for Tree School, and people would send us a lot of stuff. And uh, it was mm -hmm. awesome overall. I, I loved yeah. it. And um, yeah. But it, it does sort of 
end up accumulating. And I, I felt yeah. like bad. I wasn't able to use all of it because it is a privilege and it is fun. And yeah. people do take time and sometimes money out of their, their day, their life to send you things. Mm -hmm. um, and it's uh, I have was always grateful for it. Like anytime someone would write me a card or something, I, I would keep them. Um, mm -hmm. I, I have a, a, a stack of them that I still look at from time to time. And um, but it, it is um, it's kind of an interesting thing where you're getting physical objects from people that you've never met. You know, maybe you're aware of them. I'm sure you have regular commenters who you've come to, to know them at least mm -hmm. a little bit. But um, yeah, yeah it, it can be a, 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 an interesting, fun, but uh, strange thing. Do you have like one room that's just filled with cat stuff? Um, not anymore. I, I used to have a storage unit. Uh, where I kept these things because they can get pretty big. You saw the cat wheels video. Um, I have a lot of automatic yes. litter boxes. Um, I have a bunch of automatic litter boxes on the porch right now because I'm planning on reviewing them later. Um, but I don't want them in the house. Um, I'm, I'm kind of overwhelmed by cat things. Um, so but at this point, it's uh, in the garage. It's also in this room. It's also in the hallway and the living room. Um, and uh, but yeah it's it's a lot mm -hmm. they're they're spread around i i got you so we're we're getting towards the end of the hour mm -hmm. here and at this point i i kind of like to ask so you you've done well on youtube you're a part of a team what is your golden rule your overall kind of mindset and your your best piece of advice that you would give to somebody who wants to do well in their niche whatever it is Mm, yes. Um, well, it, it just when it comes to making the, the videos themselves, um, what I have found helpful um, is focusing on not wasting people's time um, and uh, making sure that you keep everything as much to the point as possible. And then um, I like to think that when someone comes to the video, they'll walk away, not having to go to any other resources. Um, so they should feel completely satisfied. They have all of their questions answered and they have everything they need, um, to go forward. Uh, that's, I mean, that's how I've thought about, uh, like just structuring things. Cause I come from a background with writing, um, where I know the, how to, present things in a way that increases, um, well, keeps people, like when you're looking at your analytics, for instance, you it's okay to have like a high bounce rate and it can be a good thing if you have uh, people staying on the page for a long time. So like if somebody spends seven minutes on your page and they don't go to any other um, pages um, on the site, that's a, a good sign to Google. And so I think of it kind of the same way when I'm making the YouTube videos where if someone has a question, um, I want them to have an answer quickly and the end completely. Um, so uh, they're they're completely satisfied with what they get. Um, and I also, uh, like it's not going to apply to everyone, but um, I think just, it, you know, everybody says that authenticity and being genuine and telling the truth right. um, will take you a long way, especially if you're doing things that have to do with products people really want to know that you're not being paid. Um, and so as, as authentic as you can be or, or honest about it, um, I think the better. Mm -hmm. I, I think that is all yeah. great advice. I think oftentimes people try to add too many bells and whistles. They try to overcomplicate things. But really what you're saying is just try to help people out, solve their problems, don't waste their time. Yeah. And that yeah. is that is enough. And you can grow a channel by just kind of appealing to that. And uh, maybe don't yeah. get don't let your ego get too involved, people. Um, I, I know it's hard though. It's uh, it could be fun to <laughs> let let the ego run free, but you got to be careful. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, and who knows? Maybe I've I've always taken this very dry approach, and it's something that's kind of worked for me in a sort of formulaic way. But certainly, I could stand to be more creative. And so that's, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's a whole other realm that I'm not even um, aware of, like the effect of, of, of doing things that really draw people in regardless of what 
they already know they want. Um, that's like a whole other, mm. other realm for somebody else to, to help, to help me and to help everyone else with, um, this is really engaging people who don't even know that they want what you have to offer. Mm -hmm. That, that is, uh, mm, that is a very good point. There's a lot of different niches you, you can occupy. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. I think that that is a totally different realm, as you said, yeah. but, uh, I, I think for, for those who are in like they're interested in product review uh mm -hmm. that kind of area of things informational content um this advice is uh your advice is sage i would recommend following it and um yeah with that i we've we've hit the hour here and uh why don't you tell people where they can find you your obviously it's cats.com mm -hmm. but uh any, anything else that you would like to pitch yeah so the channel name is cats and the handle is all about cats YT. So if you just search that on YouTube, you'll find us. And then of course, um, uh, the website is just cats.com. Uh, and you'll find uh, hopefully everything you need to know about cats. Mm -hmm. There you go, everybody. Uh, go check it out. You will not be disappointed. Uh, seriously, anything you need to know about cats, the website, the the channel, it, it has it all. And uh, you, you will not be disappointed. And with that, that is a wrap. Thank you so much for listening. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, everybody. Thank you.